I don't know if anybody of you is familiar with, if you ever heard or read about it, that uh, after they got in more, more people or young women, like the, the young women were, if they were older, I think, then 35, they, they wouldn't accept and they would go to the guest chambers. And also, even if they were young, if they had children, and uh, I didn't witness that, but I know what was going on because I was there for such a long time, they would uh, take the woman, would want to uh, offer her, or she didn't get, she didn't know what was offering her. I would take the children away from, it, from them and get the children in the guest chamber, and she could go to the mother, but most mothers did, did not want, they wanted to stay with the children, so they died with the children too. And, uh, and then when they got too many in camp, they decided, uh, they decided to have selections. Uh, a selection means that they were uh, after, uh, instead of marching out to work in, in the morning to the work details, they would get us out at four o'clock, the same thing, everything, and they would line us up all on the uh, camp road, all around, from all the buildings, from all the blocks. All the buildings were called blocks there too. And, uh, and we would stand there without, without the soup at lunch, we didn't get that, just the tea in the morning. Stand the whole day was lasting and they were selecting. Selecting means, well first we start the selecting the ones who are not, uh, 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 capable, they, they got skinny and, and they, they look miserable, they're not capable of working anymore. And then we noticed that it didn't always, it wasn't always, they were just selecting like six men standing behind a long table and we are all lined up in fives, standing still in fives, every day for roll call, five deep, and the whole uh, uh, camp road. But the, when it was, the, the, when he came near, closer to the table, you got single, single you passed by. And the selection meant that what the assessment thought, he didn't like your face or didn't like it, or whatever he decided, but if it was with the thumb this way, you go for that, and this way, if you got the thumb, you, was, you stay still alive. So from just his touching of the thumb this way or this way, that's where life was depending on. So in, some of, in one of the selections, you want to think about the girl to, to the sisters. One of the selections, I saw two little, two little uh, uh, Jewish girls, and they looked like they were twins. I don't know if they were twins, I didn't know them. And one of them was selected, and they looked like, almost identical, and the other one wasn't. So this gave me a pretty good idea, too. I, I was trying to observe everything and see and, and be aware of everything. And I was very lucky and I was blessed that I had uh, the God-given talent that I, that I could uh, stay alert still and watch there because a lot of them didn't think they got depressed and they didn't think it's worth living, which it wasn't. Because for some reason I decided I'd do it. Yes, I'd, I had a very good incentive. I had my younger sister and I had to protect her. So she saved my life because I wanted to live for her and I saved her life because I, I was taking care of her. So, but anyway, those two sisters went and one of them was chosen and the other one wasn't. So I looked at the other sister and suddenly she jumps out of the line, the other sister, and runs after and begs the assessment. She fell on her knees and begs the assessment to let her go with her sister. And he let her go with the sister. So later on when the selections came, you tell them about Duncan's depression? Uh, later on selections were coming, you know, if they got in, they were taking the, uh, trying to make the, the world Judenrein, what they called, free of Jews. So wherever they could, as fast as they could, if the railroad was good, the trains were good, and the railroad tracks worked, and the crematoriums were good, the more they did, the, the more they emptied it out uh, from the camp they took out, so they can have the new ones come again. And, uh, and then suddenly, I tell them about my sister now. Mm -hmm. And uh, my sister, we attended those, all those selections, and then my sister got suddenly more depressed. I mean, we were depressed probably anyway. I can't describe exactly what we looked like because there were no mirrors. But she looked depressed and she had that look in her eyes, like, you know, when you kick a puppy and it has that look, that shivering look, and she looked all the time like this. And I was wondering, what am I gonna do with her? We didn't have much time or energy to really discuss too many things. So I was thinking about it. And one, one night, 
it, we heard rumors. Nobody ever told us anything, you're going to work there or here, or there's going to be a selection or not going to be. We were just um, treated like cattle, actually, or not even that, because cattle is pretty decent. I don't know what to compare myself to, what, to compare what they were treating us, but you didn't get any information what it's going to be. But we heard some rumors there's going to be a selection, and when she was so depressed, I said, what is it? And she said, well, she said, I, I think you look a lot better than I do, and I think I'm going to be selected, and you aren't. I said, um, I was thinking for a while, and then suddenly I remembered those two sisters. So I said, well, I can do the same thing, what the other sister do, and maybe it's going to help her. And uh, she said, I'm not afraid, actually, of dying. But after they were selected, the ones who were doomed to die were standing on one side and they came in with military trucks and opened up the truck and it looked like a flatbed. And the way they were throwing the, the, the ones that selected, the poor scary, you know, throwing them up on those trucks is just not like a sack of potatoes, but like a uh, filthy garbage. Throwing them she said, this is what I'm afraid of, uh, uh, she said. And I'm afraid on the whole trip going to the gas chambers. And I'm also afraid, she said, I heard some girls talking that the Germans are trying to save on the gas. And uh, what if there's not going to be enough gas and they throw me? After the gassing, the people went into the ovens. They undressed in, in one room and they took away everything. They gave them a bar of soap to fool them that they're going to a sauna, going into somewhere to wash, which was a lie. And they took away their clothes, all nice and neat. And then there were gas, that instead of, it looked like a shower, and the openings, and through the openings instead of water, the gas came through. And she said, what if there's enough gas and I would go into the oven and I'd still be alive? And I'd be all alone. I said, well, I said, you remember those two sisters I said to her? That one of them went after the, the other one that died together. She said, yes, I do. And I said, well, you sit up and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what we're going to do. I, I promise you, I want to promise you, but I want to promise you really in a serious way. And I don't know here, we don't have a Bible or anything else, a holy Jewish prayer book. But I pretend that you put, sit up, I said. We were sitting there and we were exhausted. I still said, we're going to do that today. I said, you sit up and put your hand out and I'm putting my hand on it. And suppose our parents, I pretend, are standing right in front of us, and, and, and in front of God, I swear to you that no matter what, I, what if, he, if he doesn't take you if you, want to, if you say you're going to go, uh, want to die with me? I said, I'm going to make sure, suppose I kick him or I slap him, he's definitely going to take me. You know he's not going to allow me to do that, so he's going to take me. And I swear to you that if you are chosen, I'm going with you. And the difference, I mean, you don't live up in Auschwitz and start getting uh, all cheerful and everything. But she, it's not that she was very much al alive, but she just decided she doesn't want to die. She doesn't want to die before that selection, just drop death and die. And there was also a, a danger. Sometimes when we came out from the blocks in the morning and looked at the high power wires walls. I was surrounded by high power wires and after the wires there was a ditch and there was a stone wall and it was again electric wire and the high voltage. So when we came out in the morning, some of the girls that uh, decided that they had enough of, that they wasn't living and all they had to do is touch it and you could see in the morning in different positions hanging against and the high voltage and it would kill them immediately. And, uh, and, uh, and I, I t t told her, I'm not, I'm not going to do that, I said, and I'm not going to go, we're just going to stay, stay as long as we can. And she lived, from that day on, she was just a different person. She had to gain energy, a little bit more energy. And it's, it's in your mind a lot, too. If you want to, you can do a lot. And th this kept her going with it because I made that oath to her that we're going to go together and I can keep her alive longer.